now let's talk about uh, the pagination the pagination we have already talked about how you're going to implement so i have done this uh, i've added this kind of information into my altair client now we know that either before or after edges we could use some parameters like total count page info it is going to give us uh, has next page has previous page this kind of details so this is really going to help us in order to navigate forward navigate forward why i'm saying navigate forward because as of now going back from a certain page is not supported with this graph ql going to the last page directly is not supported using the graph ql so what navigations are supported is you can start directly from the first page and then you can start navigating from one two three four like that you cannot come back from four to three three to one like that you cannot uh, like three to two and two to one you cannot do this kind of navigation as of now but i'm hoping salesforce is really working on this so they will release it soon but as of, as of now it's not there so if you need both forward and backward then you might need to apply a custom pagination there okay but with the help of this we can only go to the forward pagination that is what we are going to see here we talked about that into the object label we are going to have a keyword call after and if we provide value null then this value is really going this is going to start from the first page and then after every result we are going to get some parameters within this object itself that is going to tell us what are the total count then up information about the page do we have next page if it is if it is says true that means we have the next page and we will use this end cursor we will use this end cursor value for the after to navigate the next set of record so if you use this end cursor value for this after you will get next set of record and this time you will see has previous page is also set to true but unfortunately we cannot navigate back to previous page okay so now what we are going to do we are going to add a button or maybe a navigation which says next next something like this and when we click on next we are going to call a javascript method that is going to check do we have next page as true if it says true we are going to store this next end cursor into the after variable and that variable will be binded to the variables getter method so let's do this let's do this to do this first thing that we will do is we will create a variable we will create a variable and we will say after equal to null by default it is going to be null value okay and then in our variables we are going to create another variable we will say after and we are going to say this dot after this dot after so the value by default it is null so it's going to take null then in our in our SQL query in our SQL query also uh, in the name of a query we are going to pass one more parameter that is going to be dollar after and it is going to be type of a string because we have seen that the written type of this uh, end cursor is a string and then in our query then in our query we are going to say after and we are going to bind with our variable this is something that we are going to do initially on the javascript side okay and then the further thing that we are going to do is going to create a method called handle next create a method called handle next passing a parameter event so that we can prevent the default behavior of that button or any navigation action and then here we are going to have some condition here we are going to have some condition but we will see that but we will see that let's quickly get back to the html and now this changes i'm doing in my new component but the same changes you can do in your existing component so better to stick with your existing component and do the coding there so below this lightning data table i'm going to add another division tag here and then we'll add a lightning button maybe lightning let's say button 
<coughs> label we are not going to do anything variant will say not value not value variant we will say brand and we are going to use icon name we are going to use icon name here and on the click on the click of this button we are going to call our method that is handle next handle next okay so which icon we want to use here which icon we want to use here so we are going to use an icon which is available under a utility class and that is chevron right so what we will do is we'll say utility colon and i really don't know the uh, i can't spell that okay so i will go to google i have already opened this slds icon and this is chevron right this is basically indicating the next so we are going to use that chevron right that is what we have that is what we have okay this is on the html side and this handle next is already handled here and then now when we click on handle next we need to navigate right we need to perform navigation so to perform the navigation <coughs> we need to know if in our current page if in our current page we have that has next page as a true we have that end cursor right so we will have to add that information as well in our SQL query after or before as so this is basically you can add it before edges or you can add it after edges okay so i'm just adding it after edges but you could always do before as well and then let's copy the same thing let's copy the same thing from our altair client you have already done this earlier in the previous videos so you could also copy from there let's copy it and paste it here so we have got these details now we have got these details now now the thing is now the thing is when this uh, handle next is going to execute it we need to know what is the data we got we need to know what is the data we have what is the page info currently we have right so let's quickly create a variable here we'll say page info by default going to have nothing by default going to have nothing and then we will say after we got the response from our graphql we will say this dot page info equal to um, data dot uh, ui api dot query then add a question mark if we have contact add a question mark dot after this contact after this contact we have got this page info right you see in the response after this object api name we have got this page info so after the contact we are going to get our page info and we got this page info we have stored into our local variable now now here in our handle next we are going to say in our handle next we are going to say let's say if this dot page info that means there is some value into the page info and we'll say this dot this dot pays info dot and what is the value we were looking for what is the value we are looking for we're looking for has next page we're looking for has next page if we have if we have if we have the value for has next page then we will say this dot after this dot after equal to this dot page info dot end cursor is info dot end cursor so we are getting this end cursor we are getting this end cursor storing it into the after variable else we will say else this dot after equal to null this dot after equal to null so what we are saying if there is a next page add that value into the add the end cursor into the after if not make this after as end so that is immediately starts from the first page it immediately starts from the first page okay and then you could also have a console.log for your object that is page info to see what exactly you are storing in this variable what exactly you are storing in this variable 
now one more thing that i would like to introduce here that is the page size that is the page size the reason the reason we wanted to introduce page size here because if you go to your apex class you'll see here by default it actually gives you five records by default it actually gives you five records so we will we might not see the result we might not see what exactly we are looking for like has next page is true and cursor is there we might not see so let's quickly first deploy this let's quickly first deploy this um, the reason we are, well, we are deploying this so that we could see it here let's quickly deploy this and we already have the console for our response so we will see what exactly we're getting from graphql okay so we have got this button that is fine as of now we don't need that what what we need to do is we need to see have we got that page info information page info and total count so definitely we have got this page info it says has next page is true that means we have next page we have next page previous page is false end cursor is also there so let's go ahead and click on next button and we got the example the accounts sorry the contacts has been changed every contact has email they have account um, some of uh, one of them is not having uh, the revenue but still we are seeing the next set of contact and if you get back again if you get back again here for ui api and you see what exactly you are getting for page info you still see has next page is true and previous page is also true but uh, unfortunately we cannot go back okay let's clear this console again and click on next button once you click on next button you got again five five new contacts you've got again five new contacts and if you see the response from ui in api you might see that we still have got has next page as true right let's clear this and again click on this button this time we again got a different set of contacts five different set of contacts if we have got five different set of contacts and if you click on ui api go there page info it, it still says that we've got has next page is true how many contacts we have how many contacts we do have here let's see here because it is actually giving us the multiple pages we have navigated to four page it was fifth page right so let me see how many contacts we have uh, we have 23 contacts we have 23 contacts but still it is giving us that okay we have got has next page has next page okay no worries the response is coming up that's fine we've got this end cursor is still there let's click on again and yes this this is now final page this is now final page so four times this is the fifth one that's good four next button and this is the fifth one so this time it should say that we don't have the next has next page is false this time has next page is false so you could see that the api is really the graphql is really giving us the navigation for the forward like forward navigation the next pages we are getting getting and getting right and if you go back again click on this it is going to show you the first five records because we really have that uh, we really have this uh, condition which says if there is no next page start from the very basic page start from the very basic page now you might want it to add some text over here right total number of records whatever records you have found then you might want it to display how many pages are there depending on your page size you might want it to divide display the page numbers there you might want it to add one more button something called reset or something you could always do that you could always do that you can always show which page number you are in how many records you are displaying right you can always do that 